This video brought to you by Manscaped. Right now, 20% off plus free shipping with code FILMENTO20. I know this is no consolation, but I just have to say that you are, without a doubt, The 355 is a new female-led action movie that on the surface has so many advantages and privileges over other original productions that it should be able to become a successful start of a franchise. Not only does it have a budget that rivals that of a high-profile Hollywood sequel, not only does it take us all around the world to genuinely interesting locations, not only does it feature internationally recognizable stars, but it also panders to China pretty hard. And so, with all this and more considered, with this movie having been given a bigger opportunity than most non-IP action movies ever get, it has to have been a success, right? Right? Yeah, so much like has been the case so many times with these female-led action movies recently, audiences weren't impressed and a bunch of money was lost in the process. And that's a real bummer, because the more these films keep underwhelming and underperforming, the less likely we are to see or get them made in the future. See, if you're into screenwriting, you'll know that for a couple years there, the best way to sell a script was to write a female actioner. There aren't many big franchises in that genre yet, so studios had to keep buying them in form of original scripts, which happened like every week. I mean, I've written my own super cool female action script that I want to sell, but I can't put it on sale because every time these films come out, they pretty much just crash and burn. Oh, good! I hope it was good because it's useless now, isn't it? Sake, man. And the reason I bring this topic up in relation to the 355 is because the movie itself is fine. There's no big controversy or anything horribly wrong here. On the surface, it's perfectly adequate. It's just that all its biggest deeper problems have their roots specifically in the gender of its heroes. That was easy. The issue isn't that the heroes are women, but rather that because the heroes are women, the movie gets this false sense that it can do less than it otherwise would have to, in terms of who the heroes are, the actions they perform, as well as the world they inhabit. And so today, let's focus on that. Let's dig deeper into the issues the 355 suffers from due to being a female-led action movie, and hopefully find fixes that the next movie like it can use to become a bit of a bigger success, so that the rest of us can finally put our own female action scripts back on the market. Girl really does need a guy to explain it all to her. Okay, let's do it. The first issue in this area here is that the specific specialty of the heroes comes primarily from their gender, which only makes them uninteresting and forgettable. The best way to introduce what I mean with this is to look at the hero introduction, starting with the American CIA agent whose first scenes show her beating a fellow male agent in combat training and then preparing for an op with great confidence and then chasing an enemy agent across Paris. There's nothing wrong with her in any of this, but there's nothing distinguishably special about her either. It's not like she suffers from a trauma that's made her not value human life or something. She's just a standard movie workaholic CIA agent. I don't have anybody else. Except she's a woman, which I guess is something since usually it would be the man twice her body weight who takes her down. Oh, best fight. As another example, look at the British MI6 agent, whose first scene is her holding a tech conference to any of the 43 access points that control internet traffic. and then using her tech skills to do generic computer stuff. Gigabyte of RAM should do the trick. We're in. Nothing wrong, but nothing specifically special either. It's not like she's presented as being too young to have such a career or anything. She's just a standard skillful movie tech agent, except I guess she's a woman. Or look at the German BND agent, whose introduction has her steal the American agent's bag and then expertly run off through Paris. Again, nothing wrong on the surface, but nothing distinguishable on the inside either. It's not like she's been psychologically conditioned to be a ruthless killing machine or something. They do verbally establish that she has trouble trusting and working with others, you must learn to vertrauen. You must learn deinen Kollegen zu vertrauen und dem Team zu arbeiten. Ich verstehe ja, dass Vertrauen 
nicht gerade sehr leicht ist. But then in practice, she's trusting and working with others immediately just like that. There's not a single moment in the movie where she goes behind her allies' backs or anything like it. I mean, she does one mission with the others and then already trusts them enough to hand them a coffin to their agency. Why would your agency get the drive? What does it matter? We hand it over, we're done. We have a station in Rabat. I can get a guy here in an hour. Okay. So, so much for that. In practice, she's just another standard movie agent. And the point I'm getting at with all this is that the heroes have so little unique individuality that they become just basic film noise. The American agent is a badass who can kick ass. The German agent is a badass who can kick ass. The Chinese agent is a badass who can kick ass. I mean, even the British tech agent can hold her own against male operatives. <laughs> Their skills and personal stories are so standard that without their nationalities, you could barely even tell them apart. I mean, Jessica Chastain's character is so similar to the character in her other recent action movie that it may as well be the same one. The only hero here who stands out even a bit is the Colombian agent, who's painted as this mere psychologist who has to step up to join a mission she's not prepared for. I am a normal person. I can do this. I'm... I'm not made for this. But even there, the individuality comes mostly from what she isn't. Because her psychology skills and knowledge never actually gets used in any way. So, I don't know. When building your action heroes, you need to find something that makes them and their journey special. Jason Bourne is a lost soul who searches for his missing past and finds out that he's not such a great person. John Wick is a tortured soul who drifts muscle cars as a way of coping and goes on a rampage across town because his dog died. Or as a recent female action movie example, look at the hero in Amazon Prime's Jolt. She has this extreme anger disorder which she has to hold back with shock therapy. And her first scene is her trying to go on a date after a long time of loneliness where she struggles not to make herself look like a maniac. Whether this is good or not is up to you, but the point is that there's something specifically unique about her that you can distinguish her for. And it's that distinguishable uniqueness that movies like the 355 have to find for their heroes from this day on. Because at this point, we've had so many female action movies that the label itself has lost its novelty. The specialty of your female hero can no longer come mainly from the fact that they're a female version of a standard character. The second issue in this area here is that the actions the heroes perform are basically just reruns of stuff we've seen male heroes do a thousand times already, which leaves them pretty lacklusterly meh. A great way to showcase this is to look at the action sequences, which are all perfectly adequate, but nothing new. The chase sequence through Paris with all the running and motorcycles is fine, but just more the same. Like you go in the subway, but don't take advantage of it. The shootout at the pier is okay because the location is interesting, but it's just more running and shooting. You're not using the location to its fullest. The high sequence at the auction is pretty to look at, but it's just the same stuff where the heroes hack themselves onto the guest list and then talk through comms and cameras and track things with generic computer skills. You're not offering anything new here. Hey. And I understand that finding brand new action is tough because almost everything's been done, but you still have to add value to familiar elements by pushing them to new extremes. You go down the subway tracks in the Paris chase, so why not do something with that? Maybe force the non-superhero characters to continuously dodge incoming trains as they fight until at some point they get trapped between two passing trains in a form of deadly close quarters combat. You go to a port, so why not lean into what that location offers? Maybe have the Americans skip across tall towers of containers while the German knocks them down one by one with the lift in an effort to stop her until the American baits the German to knock down a specific tower so that it falls right toward the guy escaping on a boat. You go into a high class auction, so well, at this point I don't even know what to do with that. I guess lean into the fact that the guests are some of the most dangerous people in the world. This list is like half the CIA's most wanted. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Good as new. 
or watch a Mission Impossible movie, something. I mean, I don't know if any of my suggestions are enough, but I'm just trying to convey that there's more you could've and should've done. Because if the audience has already seen something, it's not gonna be different with another gender. A basic movie shootout remains a basic movie shootout even with a group of women doing the shooting. Like, there's this one sequence where a Colombian guy has the MacGuffin and multiple parties are converging on him, which is mostly a redo of the Waterloo sequence in Born Ultimatum, except not as good. The sense of momentum is smaller, the location is less less exciting, the use of crowds is less effective, the methods of the characters are less clever. What was that noise? I mean, even the music, much like the sequence itself, is an inferior copyright-free version of Born. And I think a big reason behind all the vanilla action is that the movie doesn't push its characters' actions enough. There's this cool sequence where the heroes have to covertly take down enemy operatives to get the MacGuffin. It's too exposed. But then the ultimate solution is that, oh right, they're inconspicuous women. Why do you have to be exposed? Like, that's it. They just go and get the thing. That's what they do in the auction as well. They just freely go sit in the front for a few seconds because they're attractive women and then magically hack the thing. Gigabyte of RAM should do the trick. We're in. I mean, I guess it's fine, but when you compare that to Jeremy Renner having to dive into an oven, it seems a bit too lacklusterly easy. And the seduction part in that sequence was much harder as well. So you really gotta think about the new added value you offer with your action and actions. John Wick popularized Gun Fu. Tom Cruise keeps finding new ways to almost die for entertainment. Even in Jolt, there's a chase scene where the hero runs into a hospital room with babies and starts getting pissed off because they won't stop crying and then escapes by tossing them around. I'm not saying this specifically is the kind of action you should strive for, but I am saying that I've never seen it before. I've never seen a chase scene where the hero flees police by yeeting babies. Whereas I have seen all this and in better form. Point is, audiences no longer go to the theater to see women do what men have already done. A woman simply shooting a gun might have carried value in the past, but not anymore. Have your female heroes do something of their own, rather than use them to repackage the same old. The third issue in this area here is that the heroes live in a binary world where things are black and white, which is pretty two-dimensionally unimmersive. A great example of this is Jessica Chastain's CIA partner slash lover Sebastian Stan, who apparently dies in the beginning only to return toward the end as a double agent. And there's a lot of great stuff about this character on the surface, like in the moment where he's holding the women's families hostage and then goes against what we're used to seeing in this situation. Where's the drive? Shoot him. Where's the drive? Wait! Where's the drive? They've got nothing to do with it. Shoot him. Wait, 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 wait! wait. Ah! Uh -oh. Oh. Where's the drive? But surface aside, the problem with this character is that the movie never delves deeper into why he's doing what he does. It's not like the CIA has abandoned him to the opposite side or something. He's just kind of evil for evil's sake. Where's my gun? Of course, your gun. And you'll find the same thing with every bad guy in here. The main villain wants the super destructive MacGuffin because it'll make his stock portfolio even better. I have shorted the markets from Nikkei to Wall Street. The CIA commander has flipped sides without any explanation whatsoever. He was working with Nick. Okay. Whereas the CIA operative is constantly a hostile douchebag towards Jessica Chastain, and <laughs> not because of some layered reason like the fact that he's deeply jealous of her success and wants to use this opportunity to take her down, or even that he's been established to be friends with Sebastian Stan who apparently died, but because I guess there just always is that one guy. Listen to me, Grady, don't be an idiot, this doesn't track! Well, I'd say it's tracking pretty well for me. Time, what's my mother? I don't know, I don't care! And it's the opposite with the heroes, who are all fully good, because that's what they are. The MI6 agent is a reliable friend who wants to help save the world. They get this, they start World War III. The war would be over before we could even fight back. The Colombian agent is a caring psychologist who just wants to protect her family. Those same guys are out there right now. You go home, you bring them with you. Okay. 
I'm gonna need to make another phone call. The German agent is said to have trouble working with others, but never mind that, cause she works with others just fine and will even gladly trust other agencies as long as it saves the day. The CIA agent is said to be seeking revenge for her apparently dead boyfriend. Decided you needed to avenge the death? Of your teammate? But not really, because once she has the MacGuffin and thinks the world is saved, she's done. Hand it over, we're done. I mean, even the Chinese agent, who is first thought to have a darker side, quickly turns out to be full on wife material. Because, you know, China's here to care for the Western world as per usual. The drive is safe now, the world is safe. And the issue with a binary movie world like this is that it's very tough to get into or care about. Like if you place an American and Chinese agent on the same team involving a new weapon of mass destruction and there's no conflicting agendas or ulterior motives or distrust between them whatsoever, I just don't think you've thought it through. Seeing women work together to solve obstacles is inspiring and all, but it can't be only that anymore. It can't be that women are good because they just are and some men are bad because they just are. Real people do bad things for good reasons and good things for bad reasons. Your movie cannot be ones and zeros because the audience won't care. John Wick doesn't go clean up the city from mobsters because he's a good guy. He does it because he's had a few bad days too many. Thanos doesn't go clean up half the universe from life because he's a bad guy. He does it because life as a whole is growing too good to be sustainable. When we faced extinction, I offered a solution. They called me a madman. And what I predicted came to pass. Even in Jolt, the hero doesn't go fight criminals because of anything binary, but because she finally found a person she can be with and then he got taken away. It's not even that she truly loved the guy or anything, because she only met him twice. I need to see Justin. Regarding what? I was... No, we were... I see. It's just that her loneliness is a reasonable human flaw that pushes her to unreasonable inhuman actions, which is a journey emotionally layered enough for us to be able to invest in. Point is, if characters don't operate in grey areas, they and their world won't have any depth and it's just gonna be pretty boring. And so I think the main lesson to learn here and from the 355 in general is this. When making a female action movie, don't think of your heroes as female or male or black or white or anything else. Just think of them as people. But since this video will undoubtedly make some people ask who is this man to give advice on women's movies, here's the answer. I've had a lot of girlfriends. And if you want one too, behold, a new 2022 sponsor offer from Manscape and their Lawnmower 4.0 no bunny trimmer. Maybe you think you don't need something like this like I mistakenly once did, but I've personally used it for a while now and can say it's very useful. The thing is waterproof, wireless, comes with LED lights and special skin safe technology, which makes it very easy and safe for you to trim down your body and groin area, which you want to do to feel great as well as not scare away the girls. The same performance package also comes with their Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer to easily clear those areas as well as a couple potions to keep your family jewels fresh and cozy in your pants all day long. Plus two free gifts in form of a high quality travel bag as well as a pair of comfortable anti-chafing boxers. And they also have a new safe weapon against beards as well so check it out if you need it. Overall, if you want a girlfriend for movie knowledge or other purposes, click the link below and use code FILMENTO20 to get any Manscaped material you need for 20% off with free international shipping. Helps the channel as well, so thanks.